When you've got a helix, it's always useful to know where your trains are. Let me show you the method I've used. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 9 of my series of building a new model railroad. Welcome back to all my subscribers, and welcome back to those of you who are new. If you want to keep up with the progress of my model railroad build, please click on the subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon to be notified of all my upcoming episodes. Now in this episode I'm going to show you what I've done with the block detection for my helix. Now obviously when you've got a helix the last thing you want is for a train to get lost in there or for there to be a derailment and have no idea where the train is. Now I'm going to show you how I've done the block detection for this. I'm using the Digitrax DCC system so obviously in this video I'm going to be showing you the hardware related to that. I know NCE use a different kind of block detection but at least this will give you an overview of the way I've set it up and the way you can do it as well. The concept is just the same the only difference is the hardware that you use. So as I've mentioned earlier, I've, I've got five blocks in my Helix. And the reason I've done that, I just wanted to keep um, detection on each level. So if I have two trains in the Helix following each other, and one has a derailment or um, a car comes uncoupled, at least I can see that's happened. Whereas if I had one block for the whole Helix, I couldn't run two trains close behind each other and I wouldn't know what has happened to the train until it came out the other end. So it's always useful to have more than one um, detection section in a helix. Anyway, so let me show you what I've done. I'm first going to show you the hardware I've set up um, and how that's all connected to the rest of the, of the layout um, and to the track. And then I'll show you a demonstration of how it's all working using the Railroad & Co train controller uh, software. Now what I'm doing with that is I'm just setting up a little test sequence where the trains go up and down the helix and um, just to test that everything is working properly. So let's get started with the video. Let me show you the block detection for the helix. Now I've got two devices for this. I've got the new Digitrax BXP88 which is an 8 block detector and I've got the BD4 which is a 4 block detector. Now the BXP88 is an all-in-one self-contained unit. It's got a power connection coming into it, it's got a low connect connection coming into it, and it does eight blocks, detects eight blocks, but it also has um, transponding built into it and also um, a power a management system as well. So it really is a good piece of kit. Now the BD4 um, isn't self-contained at all. It needs to be fed power from something and needs to have a low connect connection provided by something else. So what I'm using is a DS64, um, which can be used for points as well, uh, for turnouts. So what this happens with this is the power is provided by the DS64, so that comes in through this connector over here. And then the input from the block detector comes into the DS64 from this, and then it goes out via the, by the low connect connector from the DS64. Now because I've got um, five blocks on each track on my Helix, uh, so 10 blocks in total, this is how I've had to set it up. Because this one does only does eight blocks, I've got the four blocks coming into each side over here, so eight in total, and then the two extra blocks are coming into the BD4 over here. So the way I've got the wiring set up, as you saw in an earlier video, I've got one common rail, which has got no isolating sections. It's connected all the way through the helix, and I've used a blue wire for that. Now that comes into here as a white wire. So this white wire joins up with the blue wires and becomes the common. And that red wire there is the common wire that goes through to the command station. Now, each detected block has its own isolated section and each section there I've used orange wires. So each of these comes in from an isolated section. So there's one rail on each section that, has, that is connected through to this. So that comes through to that, and then you'll see here, that comes through to the BD4 over here. It's got the two coming up to there. Now what I've done for testing purposes, I've got these units connected in. Now if I just show you, if I take one out, that is a contained system that has LEDs on there to show you the detection. So it's very useful to have those you can just plug it all in and you can see straight away if the blocks are detected. Now at the moment all the lights are on because the system is switched off. Um, there's no track power going into the system at the moment. Now what I'll show you is if I'm going to find my 
system I will switch the rail power on and you'll see this changes now you can see here I've got one light lit over here that tells me I've got a train in the detected section and the other one is off so it's not showing anything at the moment I'm going to remove one locomotive from the track which will be this one over here and you'll see as soon as I take it away that light goes out put it back on again light comes back on again so that just shows me that blocked that detected section is working properly now the other one if I just check if I've got my locomotive connected here at the moment it's not on the detected block on the BXP88 it's on the DS64 so that's not showing anything at the moment I haven't got a spare one of these at the moment to plug in there but I'll move this locomotive onto a detected block for the BXP88 and what you should see is one of these lights come on so put it into the detected block and there we go there you've got the light coming on so again if I remove the locomotive from the track that light goes off put it back on again the light goes back on so that shows me that detected block is working and it's great for testing um, so I don't need to connect it to a computer system to see what's happening I can just use these lights to tell me what is happening with the block detection now what I've done for testing is I've used um, train controller which is the software I use for the automation um, but it's also quick and easy to set up a a sample layout just for testing um, it doesn't take long to set it up at all um, I'll show you how I do that later on and what I've done with that I've just set up the helix with all the blocks and I can see on that each section lights up as I move the locomotive around but what I've also done is I've set up an automated schedule for both locomotives so I can have the, the locomotives running up and down the helix automatically on a repeated sequence so they go to the top of the helix they'll stop they'll reverse go back down to the bottom and vice versa they'll just carry on going I think I've done that 10 it does it 10 times before it stops and that's just a way of me for me to check that everything is working properly so next video I'll show you the locomotives running around the associated lights lighting up on here and also you'll see the train controller screen at the same time so you can see what happens on that screen with the block detection so let's get on to that So I hope that all made sense. As you can see, this, is, this concept will work with any railroad. Um, it just depends on the hardware you use. Every DCC system uses a slightly different type of hardware and some hardware you can use for depending what, doesn't matter what system you've got. And it's some hardware you can get that'll work with any system. It all depends what your chosen system is and what method you want to use. So now that I've got it all up and running, um, my Helix is pretty much finished um, and finally the um, kits have arrived for the baseboards so in my next episode i'll show you how i put those all together i'll show you what the kit consists of and i'll show you how easy it is to put it all together once i've got that all done i'll be able to start doing the yards and then i can connect it all to the helix and at least have one section running so that's going to come up in the next few weeks in the meantime i hope you enjoyed watching if you haven't already subscribed please click on the subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon to be notified of all my upcoming episodes so as always, keep safe and see you soon.